All right, all right. Sorry about that, guys. I had to redo the entire feed because things just weren't going right. So if you guys are watching this in hindsight, I'm back. <laughs> so today I'm doing something a little special. I'm making a pressure chat test jig. And I have to do this because there's certain tests that we do as biomeds that are cumbersome. And I'm going to try and make it a little less so. I swear my desk isn't normally this cluttered up, but uh, today is an exception because today I, um, I'm in the middle of making a pressure test jig. And uh, this is a whole composition of different parts, different pieces of medical devices. And uh, I'm going to make this because what we are going to use this for is testing all sorts of devices that require the biomed to create pressure. And usually we create pressure with things like this. So a squeeze bulb. And the problem is, is that's not very accurate. And when you get up to higher pressures, this little squeeze bulb, your arm's going to get really tired. So if you're doing a string of, let's say, pneumatic tourniquets, which is really the cream of the crop for this, this device I'm building, pneumatic tourniquets are going to be awesome with this device because I have here two different um, air pumps. They're different styles. One of them is a piston style. One of them is a rotary style compressor. And they're actually feeding into each other, which is really crazy. And I have to do that for a reason because I need to boost the pressure for the piston pump. The piston pump right here is for flow because I can get a higher flow rate. And I need that flow rate to fill up. This is an air reservoir. You might recognize it as a pneumatic tourniquet. It's rolled up. And you have to have an air reservoir to stabilize out the air pressure because you don't want your air pressure going up and down. You want it to be stable before it hits your regulator. And you can see here in the side of the case, I've already put in a, um, I've already put in a regulator and you can see on the outside, I have the gauge, uh, <laughs> believe it or not, these are all pieces to other, uh, other, other devices. Like this gauge right here came from, um, I think it's from a, uh, air conditioning free on booster, <laughs> you know, but it's still in PSI and that's all I need to, to utilize this device. All right. So yeah. Uh, well, okay. So here's the thing. I did not go to, to work today. Um, throughout the day yesterday at work, I suffered with these migraines every once in a while, guys, uh, I get migraines and with stress, low sleep, et cetera. Um, it gets really bad for me guys sometimes. And I think I'm still playing catch up from earlier in this week because Sunday night I worked all night throughout the night installing these tracking tags on all these medical devices at my, at my hospital. And, uh, ever since then I've been playing catch up with my sleep, with my rest, you know, when I'm home, I got stuff to do and whatnot. And so like yesterday I was, I was suffering throughout the whole day. And this morning I woke up and I, instantly felt that that lingering headache you know that one that's not like killing you but you know is going to really mess things up for you throughout the day and uh so i said no that's enough uh, <laughs> so i come out here to the shop and i chill out uh because in the house i've got my kids screaming and running around and stuff so i come out here to kind of be in my shop and just chill out relax and make cool stuff that's what i'm doing man <laughs> so guys um this is going to be quite the cool little thing and i i have been thinking about this for a long time because when we're doing uh pneumatic tourniquets you're sitting there squeezing the shit out of this little bulb this guy right here you know and once you get up above like 300 millimeters of mercury which is not that much pressure your wrist like your your arm feels like it's that big so I came up with this this design and it's basically going to have um, either an external battery i wanted to put a battery inside it so i got i got these little batteries maybe i can put them inside haven't completely figured it out yet but um 
the point being for this device is that you have a portable air compressor that has an adjustable regulator. And this regulator here is zero PSI to 15 PSI, which is not much, but you don't want it to be much because you need that resolution for uh, reaching all these different pressures for calibrating medical equipment. So let's say uh, in order to calibrate a medical device, you need it to go to 100 millimeters of mercury. Well, you just pop this guy all the way down and then uh, you let the compressor run It'll fill up this little air bladder right here, and then you can start regulating it, you know, to get to your 100 millimeters of mercury. And then if the very next pressure you need to reach is 250 millimeters of mercury, well, that's a little bit of a jump. So you turn this guy right here until it reaches 250 millimeters of mercury, and, you know, then you uh, hit the button on your medical device and say, hey, I'm at 250. So... Uh, the analog gauge right here, this is just for reference, okay? Just to show you kind of where you're at on the scale. Really, what's going to be teed into here, and I have a whole bunch of these uh, brass tees. Okay, so what's going to be probably teed off is going to be um, your manometer, an electronic manometer, and then your device under test, your, your medical device. So... From this output, that's where you're going to have your external calibrated manometer, and then you're going to have your medical device. So this analog gauge right here is just for reference. And basically, you can do a function check, you can do a leak check, and all that kind of stuff right here without even hooking up your manometer. So I'll show you guys a little bit about what's going on. Is that going to show up? I don't know. All right, guys. Well, uh, this is an, a very oversimplified version of what I got going on here. So I have uh, the battery power uh, going through the on switch to a pump, which is actually two pumps. And like I said, one pump is boosting the other pump. So it's like a primary. Here, hold on. So actually, this line isn't right here. This pump right here is outputting to a second pump. And both these pumps are running in parallel. And then this guy here is coming over here. Okay. All right. So this guy is coming over here and this guy is coming over here. So they're running in parallel. So we need that pressure boost because these tiny, tiny little pumps, we need them to get up to 15 to 20 PSI. So the highest pressure I think I've seen on a medical device to calibrate is like 475 millimeters of mercury, um, or is it 750? Might be 750 millimeters of mercury. Anyway, if I remember right, it comes out to like 14.5 PSI. So that's why I have my 15, uh, 0 to 15 PSI regulator on here. So anyway, uh, your pressure comes out of your pumps. It goes into your regulator, 0 to 15 PSI. It goes into your, um, your analog gauge. And then from there, it goes to your output port where it's going to tee off to your external manometer and uh, your device under test. Very simple. Very, very simple, guys. And uh, it, it seems like such a simple solution that you would think that somebody out there would have already made this device. Um, because there are a series of devices where we have to output a very specific air pressure to calibrate the device. And a lot of times guys will use a syringe and, you know, it just, it's cumbersome and it takes forever to do. I mean, it's very accurate. Some of those calibration syringes, like you screw the, uh, the plunger, it screws in and then, you know, it holds, but then you got a little petcock valve. You close it off. You open the syringe back up. If you need more pressure, close Close that, open that, and you squeeze it back down until you reach your pressure that is desired. No more of that, guys. No more of that. This design right here is just to, uh, you turn the stupid thing on, you just crank it to the pressure that you need on the manometer, and then you hit 
the accept button on your uh, device under test. That's how almost all of them are nowadays. You'll have a display screen that says like calibrate pressure. And um, there's all sorts of medical devices that have pressure transducers, by the way. And you have to like have 15 millimeters of mercury worth of pressure, zero, you have to zero it. So zero uh, millimeters of mercury. And they'll ask for like 100 or 200 millimeters of mercury. And we can do all that right here with this little zero to 15 PSI regulator, okay? So I actually got this idea because uh, the kit that, um, is it Striker? Anyway, uh, the pneumatic tourniquets that we have, they will sell you a German made uh, regulator and it connects just a regular airline to your hospital air. And you have to assemble the kit to pay in the butt, but they charge you like $800 for this calibration kit. And the whole time I'm thinking, why the hell are we spending $800? You know, it's not like it's machined to tolerance or anything. It's just a stupid regulator. And that same exact regulator I have found on eBay for like $30, $40, but they're selling it to us for $800. So that's when I started getting an idea of this. I was thinking, okay, I've got different types of uh, air compressors, you know, from uh, non-invasive blood pressure monitors, uh, maybe from pneumatic tourniquets. And uh, so I started looking at them and thinking, and then I found both of these ones. They're both six volt motors. And then I wanted to check the overall pressure to see just how much pressure do these types of pumps kick out because they use a different technical um, pumping mechanism, okay? One of them is a uh, back and forth piston and the other one is a rotary where it just... So um, since they use two different technologies, believe it or not, this little guy right here actually puts out more pressure than the large one but the large one can handle more flow so the happy medium to this whole thing is to use the little guy as a booster to the big one and i am getting up to 20 psi now normally this little guy right here puts out like 15 to 16 psi and the the larger pump right here it puts out like 12.5 psi okay so it's not very much but together this pump boosting this one, I'm actually getting about 20. And at that point, trust me, I'm shutting the stupid thing down because if I completely occlude it and it's going over 20 PSI, this guy right here becomes like a little bomb. All right. Because that kind of, that kind of pressure is just insane on, on, you know, a soft pressure reservoir. So I've got all these zip ties wrapped around it for a good reason, because it has exploded once or twice on me already today. So, um, but this is absolutely necessary because you, you want to have some sort of pressure reservoir between your pumps and your regulator. All right. So it is what it is. Um, I don't have a rigid reservoir, you know, at this moment, I, I could probably make one, but why this works fine. So that's where I'm at guys. I have my power switch installed. I have actually, I just got through installing a, um, a DC power jack for like a barrel jack, like you see on most medical devices. So that, that's the guy that's sitting right here. I've got both my motors right here hooked up in parallel. And I was just going to start soldering this stuff and putting it together, man, and uh, finishing it up and showing you guys what this stupid thing can really do because it's, it's pretty crazy. I've already tested it out when it's scattered across my desk. And I am using very rudimentary stuff. Let me tell you, like when it comes to a, a digital pressure gauge, I have got this Craftsman tire pressure gauge for checking car pressure. But once you disassemble it and you get down to the pressure transducer, there you go. There, there is your pressure gauge right there. So uh, it's very crude, but it works. So that's how I can judge, you know, whether this design or that design gives me more pressure. And mind you, the highest pressure that I need is uh, is 14 and a half PSI, which is, I think, 750 millimeters of mercury. All right. So that's enough tucking, guys. Uh, I have been working. I actually um, I was using a very large stepper drill bit and I was cutting the hole in the side here. And 
the bit actually went all the way in the case and it wasn't coming back out. And when I pulled it out, it just skidded up my wrist a little bit. And, uh, you know, stupid stuff. It is what it is. So here I am. I had, <laughs> you know, Bjorn, you are absolutely right. And I do have some PVC with some end caps. And I do have plenty of fittings. I've got these style fittings. I've got the screw down fittings, the hose barbs. So I could do something very cool with a small piece of PVC and it would be more efficient. But at this moment, um, I'm just going to do with what I got until I can prove the concept. And then uh, press on from there. So I got to solder these things together. I got my DC input right here. And I really just brought you guys in on the middle of it um, because at first I was thinking, man, is my headache going to be so bad that I'm not going to be able to do this today? But trust me, I don't know if there is such thing as a bad day in the workshop. So I would rather come out here in the workshop than go inside and listen to like kids singing and stuff like that. So <laughs> that's why I'm here, guys. Let's see if I remember right. Okay, so important part is to note which connector is going to the uh, the positive pin on the DC input. And I would like to guess, but I hate undoing my work. So I'm just going to take a uh, continuity measurement. Okay. So red goes to the outside. You wouldn't normally think that. You'd think that red goes to the inside, which is normally your positive pole. So, okay, it's white. Here we go. How are you guys all doing, man? It's a, it's a Friday. I'll tell you what, man. It's been kind of a long week, and uh, I'm starting to come to kind of a realization that I'm, I'm getting a little bored at my job because I have been placed in uh, laboratories, and in my opinion, laboratories are – not very complex they're not very challenging so for me personally uh it's a little boring and you know whenever your workers are bored they're going to be less efficient than they they than they could be unfortunately that, that's the truth uh let's see i got my good old soldering iron out i'm gonna tin up some wires Right. These ones right here are for the motors. All right. Cool. I don't know if you guys do very much soldering, but I'll tell you what, it's like one of those basic skills that I recommend any biomed get really good at i mean i've argued this with so many times with so many biomeds that they say they hardly ever use a soldering iron it's like man you could be the type of biomed that just ships stuff out that's true manufacturers are more than eager to take your money but in my opinion if you just ship stuff out you're, you're not a very good biomed you're uh i mean a secretary can be trained to do your job at that point Let's see what we got. I don't think you guys can really see it, but when I pull my soldering iron away from the lead, uh, away from the tinned lead, I leave a ball of solder on there. So when I put two wires together, they just kind of melt into each other. It's very fast. It's very effective. And it's just that technique of when you put solder on the wire, you hold your soldering iron next to it, and then you slowly pull your soldering iron away, and it leaves a nice little ball on the end of your wire. 
is something uh, I think a lot of people should be practicing is uh, tinning your leads correctly because now I can put stuff together really, really quickly. Let's see. Put some of this action on. I'll actually stick with the color code. Red to red, black to black. Doesn't really matter. Why not? All right. So the first thing I am going to tin is going to be my uh, it's going to be my white, which is going to be my positive on my uh, barrel connector. Here we go. Man, normally I don't have this kind of problem. There we go. That's better. Nice and neat, guys. Nice and neat. Okay. And I've got my quick hot air station all set up. You can see my lights flickering. I don't know why it does that. It's the weirdest thing. Okay. Right there. She goes, man. <laughs> um, you know, life to lights. Uh, when the manufacturer doesn't supply parts, you have to ship it out. Yes and no. Yes and no. It depends on the part in question. Uh, and it depends on your location. Okay. So in the United States, there's a lot of devices where they highly prefer us to use OEM parts. But if you have a device and you're in another country, you can use all sorts of parts to, to get your medical device up and going. I mean, I've got a whole basket full of parts here that I could probably get a bunch of devices up and going. So um, I guess it's all about where are you and, you know, what type of... Uh, you know system do you work under a lot of a lot of my viewers are in some pretty remote areas and you know you got to do what you got to do man just uh you know get it back up and running so that everybody can stay in business okay so since my positive leads here that's gonna drive me crazy oh shoot anyway i should have untangled them all right so my positive is coming through over here. Let's put it on the side. It's going to match up to this guy. You see my technique for putting these wires together. It's I hold two of them with my uh, my forefinger and my thumb, and and then I hold my other wires with these two fingers over here. It's just I don't know, just the way I've been able to do it for years. <laughs> It seems to work out pretty fast. And you see, I always blow on it. I blow on it to hurry up and cool down the joint because you don't want uh, those wires to slip off, especially if you got a big old hot ball of solder on there. It could go flying. I know, guys, I'm supposed to have like eye protection and stuff. And I do have some someplace here. I'm such a bad example. So all the time I'm tinkering with stuff and I'm playing around with different jigs and whatnot. And that's why I think that this thing is going to be such an interesting piece. Even if it's not for me, uh, I think this will be an interesting piece for somebody else maybe to learn from. Hell, I'll let somebody take it apart if they want. I don't even care. Let's see, so the red is going to be my negative. And this should finish up this device. 
and then I'll turn it on <laughs> and we can see if it catches on fire, right? I know I should work with shorter wire leads because it neatens things up, but I was just kind of in a hurry. Oh, son of a gun. See, it got me. There. Telling you, if you guys don't have a hot air station, I so recommend getting one. This makes life so much better. And I have been using my Milwaukee cordless heat gun. Oh my gosh, that makes life easier in the field for sure. I love that device. All of these are dual layer shrink tubes. So I'll heat them up probably more than what you'd normally see somebody heat up shrink tube. Makes that little glue squirt out the sides. Makes a very tight water watertight connection. All right, there we go. Okay, so that should be all the soldering needed. I should have put some uh, something down on my my leads down here. Tell you what, so we got some of this for. I don't want these wires bouncing around down inside uh, this case, snapping off at the motor housing. All right, all right. That's going to be very good. So I use uh, I use hot glue, not necessarily as an adhesive, but more like a celastic, which is uh, a material that you squirt down to keep things from vibrating around. Basically, makes everything more permanent, more durable. Let's see. Jack Cunningham says, "I've got a question. How do you guys interact with the OEM field service guys? I'm looking to change. Well, um, industrial chemistry OEM to medical device." You know, we interact with OEM guys all the, all the time, and almost all of them are fantastic. I mean, some of the nicest and most professional people I've ever met in this career field have been OEM vendors. And I'll tell you what, uh, they're some of your most reliable sources, not, not just for like information on your medical device, but also for possible jobs. Your, your local vendor is an excellent source of information because they travel through all the hospitals and they know the lowdown of what's going on at every single hospital. Your OEM vendor is a very good source of information. All right, all right. So later I will neaten this all up when I know that this is going to be my final design. Let's see. So I put my barrel connector on and now all I need is a male barrel connector. Let's see. Like that, right? Ha! Ah, look at that. All right. So I got my power switch right here. I've got my output test port. I have my uh, regulator right there. And I have an analog gauge. And right here is my uh, power port. So let me get a power uh, barrel connector. I should have one or two of them floating around here. I have a whole drawer full of parts right here. You never know when you're going to need them, man. to go over to my power supply drawer. Or do I? This is it. 
So close. Volts one amp. I need a little more amperage. Who cares? Let's go ahead and just hook this guy up and see how well it works. So these are six volt pumps. at five volts not enough juice i think i'm gonna have to up it up a little bit here but it does work it does work guys all right i do need a uh proper size barrel connector though. so this is a barrel connector you guys have seen them they're ubiquitous uh <laughs> craig the vendor uh you know something uh the vendors are who we steal information from so we, we try and learn as much from the vendors as we can while they're in house doing something for us mm. <laughs> Spare parts. Let's see. My meter's still on. So if you guys ever do splices on these uh, barrel connectors, just remember, always ohm out your, uh, always do a continuity check on what your positive pole is, which is your center pole. Sometimes it's the white stripes. Sometimes it's not. So don't always rely on that. There we go. Yeah, this time it is the white stripes. I've seen that different though. And I have right here my uh, regulated DC power supply, so we can hook it up, and I can throw I can throw three amps at this guy, and three amps that's that's some juice, man. Let me tell you. You know, I have a notebook adapter right here, but it doesn't have the correct power port on it um, but I have a BK precision regulated power supply this is where it's at guys here let me shut off my my irons and let's get rid of the hot melt glue gun I got so much stuff that's sitting here all right so here I've got it set currently at 5.5 volts and Two amps, two amps of power. Woo. That should be good. So there is a diode on my larger pump. So polarity does matter. 
And uh, I know some pumps, it wouldn't matter because as it rotates, you know, it's going to, it's going to work whether it's going this direction or this direction, you know, it's just designed that way. But because my one pump motor inside does have a diode, so polarity does matter and, you know, it is what it is. Um, all right. So let's see, where's my power port right here? I kind of have to hold it in there to get a good connection because it's not the right one, but you'll get the point. Okay, let's let's up the voltage a little bit. There we go. Okay, you guys can see the little analog gauge right there doing its thing. Regulate the pressure. See, that's the resolution that we need. You see how I'm going up and up and up like that? And I have to spin it quite a few times? That's resolution. You have to have that because if, if it's really fine, you're going to go back and forth over the set pressure that you're looking for. So right now, whew, this guy is sitting at what? 22 PSI according to this thing. 22 PSI. So here's my digital gauge <laughs> that I was telling you guys about. I will set this guy up here. You're going to see. I know it's corny, but it's going to work. I Trust me. Trust me. It's going to work. Okay, set him up right there so y'all can see that it is working. Make sure this is all on. My bad. did I do wrong? I probably popped a hose off. 22 PSI is a lot of pressure. That's a crazy amount of pressure for uh, this tiny little pump system. Let's see. I got that guy. I got that guy. Hell, I'll do it with the cover open <laughs> just so I can see if there's a hole that's popping off someplace. Okay. Get my pressure gauge. Here's this one. All right. And DC power. So, guys, uh, I have another video that I've been so d thinking about releasing and not releasing. I actually went out and I did a, a video on exploding fruit with a defibrillator and I wanted to prove something and I was purposely trying to explode fruit with a defibrillator. I did it right here on the desk. I recorded everything and I have not released that video. I haven't even started editing it because it's like, ah, nothing much happened. Okay. <laughs> That's just, you would think that the fruit would explode, fly across the table or something. It's not like that at all. In fact, um, I had it set at 360 joules of energy and I had it cranked all the way up and it still would not do it. So I was like, okay, maybe it's something I'm doing is wrong. So then I took my leads, I plugged them into a banana and I plugged it straight into the electrical outlet because, hey, maybe I'd like to see what happens to a banana when it's turned on to an electrical outlet. I don't know. And nothing happened. So basically, I was just seeing how conductive a banana really is. Because if it's not conductive much at all, you're not going to get a shock. You're not going to get an explosion. I did ohm out the fruit at the very beginning. And the banana was at like 200 kilo ohms. And the other fruit, an orange and an apple, they were in like the mega ohm type of region. Like 800, 900 kilo ohms. They were really high. So I was like, okay. Those fruits there are not going to conduct any electricity. It's not going to happen. So I, I went with plan A, which was electrifying the banana. And not much happened. 
But at the same time, one of the things I wanted to document was how much of a pain in the butt it was just to get the defibrillator to recognize that I want it to shock because it's looking for um, a certain ohms resistance across the body, you know, when you put the pads on and it's looking for a whole bunch of set conditions before it allow you to charge the defibrillator and before it allow you to shock. So I, I recorded all of this and nothing much happened. And I proved my point that defibrillators are way safer than what most people would think they are. You know, a lot of people think like you can shock somebody from across a room or some shit. It's not like that at all. Uh, defibrillators are actually extremely safe and they have all sorts of electronics that monitor what's going on with them. So I, I recorded that video and I just want to see what you guys' opinion on. Nothing much happened. It, nothing much happened, man. And I thought for sure that I would ex at least, you know, explore. Didn't happen. So I never released that video. I never even started editing it. I was kind of upset, but at the same time, I was kind of satisfied because, you know, a lot of people seem to think that they're not very safe, but they are extremely safe. All right, let's see. I got my... Okay, I've got a leak here someplace. And I have no idea where. All right, man. That just goes to figure. I get it all done, and someplace I have a leak. It's got to be right, right around here. There's zero. Okay, I had it screwed down too much. It caps out at 15 PSI. My bad. I didn't know that that would be a problem. Oh. All right, guys. Well, I think I need to finish up and get the rest of the correct connectors for what I need to do. That's full of air. PSI. Voltage. Woo. Okay. I think I've got too much air pressure built up. Yep. Isn't that a weird situation?
Well, shoot. Man, 11 PSI. Oh, this thing's driving me crazy. PSI. And on this side, I'm sitting at 22 PSI. All right, I need my digital manometer. Oh, well, it is what it is, guys. This guy is a piece of garbage, and I can't get it to stay on. Oh, my bad. I'm reading it upside down. 17 and a half PSI, so it's, it's reading high. Anyway, uh, I figured I'd give it a shot, and I just need to find the correct barrel connector to go to this guy, and it should be ready to test out. So like I said, you're going to have your test hose that comes off of this port. Now, this is a lure lock fitting, so there's a lot of test jigs that will automatically, they'll automatically just twist and connect onto it. But for me and for many biomeds, we just shove the hose on it. <laughs> and then it's going to have a T-fitting like this guy, and then it's gonna tee off to uh, the digital manometer and then off to the device that's under test. And you are gonna adjust the air pressure using this guy right here up and down to whatever the air pressure is, the device is looking for to, to calibrate. And that is exactly what this guy is. It's a portable air power source. And I guess that's, the simplest way to put it it's just a portable air source and i need to find a way to put a battery inside it and make it chargeable maybe maybe i'll make that the charge port we'll figure it out but uh a neat little device i've i've just been thinking about it for a long time and today i just decided i'm gonna do something about it i'm gonna build it i don't know what about you guys what's going on with you guys' lives man i have been so busy uh, hope you guys like my my shirts the better biomed logo on there so that's a new thing but uh are you filming yeah oh sorry. <laughs> it's all good so yeah i'm uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's it's up there looking straight down so um aquarium aquarium bubbler what is everybody coming in i'm gonna take this to the playground okay all right um oh boy all right, guys, I'm going to have to let you all go. I've, I've got a crazy headache that's that's killing me, and she's right over there. So, <laughs> But uh, I hope you all have a wonderful weekend, and uh, keep looking up, guys. I got some, uh, some videos that I need to edit and some very cool stuff. Mind you, uh, MD Expo is coming up in just, what, two weeks, three weeks, something like that. I'm going to be there. I hope to see some of you guys there. It's going to be absolutely fantastic here in Dallas, Texas. It's going to be some fun times, guys. So come on out. Let's hang out. If you guys want to talk shop or whatever, I'll be there. Anyway, y'all have a fantastic weekend, okay? See y'all. Bye. <laughs>